Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel. My name is Paula and in today's video I'm gonna show you the handbag I bought for myself as my birthday present. So if you want to know what it is, even though you kind of know of the name of the video, uh, but if you want to know exactly what it is, <laughs> please keep watching. Wow, it feels so great to be back filming. I actually took a break um, I think I haven't filmed anything in one and a half months or so. Um, so that actually means that in June I filmed a lot so that there actually was some content uh, during the summertime. But now I'm back again, more updated videos. And I actually have a lot of uh, pre-filmed materials coming. I'm I'm gonna try my first like travel vlog as we were in Italy this summer and I did actually at least made an attempt to vlog. So we'll see how bad I am at that. Uh, so that will be coming and, and then my channel reached a thousand subscribers. Yes, thank you by the way for that. Uh, a few months back already and I'm now happily monetized maybe that's that's the, the word so i'm planning on sharing kind of how much i received as my first paycheck etc also what i purchased with that because obviously i did buy something and so on so there's lots of stuff and i actually did ask here in youtube i made a questionnaire of like what would you want to see first and a handbag unboxing was a clear winner. So we're gonna start with that and then all the rest will follow. And boy, I feel like I might be a bit rusty and I might be kind of excited and talk too fast or talk too slow. And I'm sorry, I haven't done this in a while. And I'm a bit excited or a lot excited actually, cause I get to share more videos, more recent content, uh, more fresh content and so on. But maybe that's enough of an intro. I've missed you. Hope all is well. And um, let's move on to the actual unboxing. So, um, I did actually, no, I filmed the actual <laughs> unboxing when we were in Italy. Um, or should I say my little helper filmed it. Um, and you might catch some glimpses of him while doing so and I'm sorry about the like filming angle um, of the unboxing so it might look good it might not but let's just go to that and then continue talking all right let's get into the unboxing so uh, this is how it came pretty much a very specific shaped paper bag and there was a sticker, but it really didn't hold up that well. As you can see, there is no box. As far as I know, Goyard doesn't provide boxes to any of their St. Louis coats. And then, without ripping everything... So this is how it comes, wrapped in yellow tissue paper and there is also a sticker here and I probably can do it like this and it comes with a Goyard dust bag which has which has the address for the original Paris boutique on it it feels quite sturdy like cotton type of material and here is my bag. It actually looks a bit smaller when it is completely, uh, I don't know, folded. But this is the GM size. And as you can see, it comes with plastic wrappers on the handles, which is a bit odd to me. And this is probably the only luxury brand that I know that provides plastic on their handles because uh, for me this would be a bit like fake bags maybe would come with that but let's see if I can open this so this is the 
the bag so i went with the classic black on black leather and it comes with this small pouch so yeah this is my new bag and here we are back again so this is as mentioned the goyard saint louis tote in the gm size which as far as i know there is a pm size and a gm size maybe a bigger one but pm and gm are the most commonly known sizes so this is the bigger one of those and i went with the black canvas on black leather trimming uh so goyard goyard sees black so this canvas in particular as their classic color uh, which has a certain price point and the choice you can have is in the leather handle so either the black or the tan and then they have like more colors uh, which are very bright and beautiful rich colors and um, they are then more expensive but as I promised in the name of the video uh let's talk about also like pricing as well as my shopping experience at the goyard store in milan italy but maybe we start first by looking at, at the bag itself so it is a tote bag a very big 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 tote bag uh which has kind of like some type of cloth um interior and then leather piping all around inside it comes with a small pouch the same way as neverfull neverfull has a bigger one anyway uh which is this one it is attached to the bag or let's say uh, this section is attached to the bag you can actually detach the pouch let me see if it's at all looking good um and remove and just like use this but this is still gonna be hanging on the bag if you do so um there is a back pocket which has some kind of cardboard in it here um i'm just gonna put it back because i don't know what it is and then it comes with a snap button and some and uh i actually have put all of these things including the receipt inside and this is what the pouch looks like and the inside is just like one open pocket and um yeah that's it here it says goyard paris made in france let's see if the video catches it otherwise i will then need to take a photo um so what i had in the pouch is this tag that was hanging of one of the handles when i purchased it so it just says coated textile calfskin leather made in france so that's that and then it came with um, some kind of i don't know instructions or care guide or what it is for this specific bag i'm gonna put that in there as well and then I myself added my receipt into this pouch so that I wouldn't lose it. Let's have a look-see, shall we? It's quite funny how Goyard has managed to create this, I don't know, secretness around it. So um, Goyard, I would say, is quite exclusive brand in a way that they don't have an official online web store or you can't order online the same way as you maybe can with all the other brands excluding chanel obviously uh, what i have heard stories of that you can actually email goyard and then maybe purchase a bag but in general like they don't sell online um and even though they do have all of their items on their website they don't have prices in there we can all have an opinion <laughs> about that which then means that um unless you know where to look for the prices you need to go to the store to find out what stuff costs 
and um, I don't really know in which order we should go. Maybe I'll just we'll look at the price first and then I can share my experience of it. So it came with this cardboard and then with a, a receipt, just the normal receipt paper. Where's the luxuriousness of this? I tell you, I'm asking. So, just checking that it doesn't have any of my details visible. Okay, there it does. So, here is what I bought and how much I paid. So, the bag was 1,250 euros. So, for the classic colored St. Louis tote in the GM size. And unfortunately, I didn't ask what the PM would cost or the colorful ones, which are more expensive than that. Yeah, so I can only provide the price for what I paid or bought anyway. I found find it quite interesting that when I started looking for this bag before I had purchased it, as I always look from the pre-owned websites, um, this bag was being sold with 1,500 euros up to even 2,000 euros. And that raises two questions. Either people don't really know what this costs, so then they are ready to pay such a premium. Or it is in fact for the exclusivity and that it's quite hard to get. And that's why the value actually increases whenever you own a bag of this caliber. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I quite quickly realized that I was most definitely not going to buy this pre-owned uh, because the price point for this, it is cheaper than the Neverfull, which is like on, on every other person's shoulder, including my own, which I do love but I'm not entirely certain if 1,500 euros that is now going for, I think, the Neverfull, if that's really uh, the price I would still pay. But like, regardless of that, this costs less money than the Neverfull. And the, the reason why I actually purchased a tote, because I have, oh God, I have talked about totes on my channel frequently, or at least, quite many many times and um, come to the conclusion that I'm not a toad person um, in my normal life. I don't usually wear toads, only when I travel. But now as it has happened, my role at my workplace has changed or I've, I've been <laughs> uh, receiving a lot more responsibility and that includes a lot of traveling, maybe like three times a month, three to four times a month or something like that. And I've noticed that I have taken like only hand luggage anyway. It's usually one or maximum two nights that I am gone on the same same time. Um, so I've been only taking a tote bag, not even like a rolling luggage. But I have my current tote that I own, which basically include the Neverfull and one long champlet pliage, which I think is either similar size as my Neverfull MM or then a tad smaller. But anyway, so they are kind of, I can fit my stuff in them, but a bigger would be better. So as I love <laughs> luxury handbags, of course, I started to think like, what tote bag would I want to have? But like a tote bag that is not branded, she says. Uh, maybe you know what I mean, like the overly hyped and recognizably branded bags. Um, I wanted something that I could wear without being concerned that everyone knows that I'm carrying an expensive bag. I might actually be wrong. Maybe nowadays people do recognize the Goyard print and know that it is not like from the high street. I don't know how it is, uh, but my assumption is that Goyard is not so known for people outside of 
luxury community or those who are interested in luxury handbags or luxury brands in general. That's my assumption and I might be proven wrong. But anyway, I wanted that and I felt Goyard represents that type of brand. And this tote bag, I tell you, it is big and it definitely fits my need. So I can just have only this bag and then like a crossbody bag with the essentials and go to my travels. I don't even need to bother with this like rolling luggage thing because uh, I'm a compact packer and especially for work trips when I'm carrying it myself uh, most likely to the office and then to the hotel and back to the office and blah blah blah. I don't need a lot of bags or heavy weights so I'm just like I plan what I wear that's it some hygienic products, my laptop, I'm good. And and so like this bag is purchased for for the purpose pretty much, uh, for work purposes. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm in love. I It's ridiculous because this is coated canvas that has painted this type of print on it. I think it looks beautiful and probably that's the only thing that matters <laughs> but i really 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 love this and it looks great most likely it's gonna be work trips that is that are happening all the time um and i think this bag is perfect for that to be honest not sure if i needed this but it's quite a nice um attachment and maybe i will find a way what i would want to put in here but I think this looks so, so good. And I have my next business trip, well, next week, as I'm filming it now, next week from now. So when this is coming out, I've already been on the trip and uh, I can't wait to use it. I used it already when we came back from Italy. <sighs> um, in, during the flight. And these felt really, really good on the shoulder. Uh, but there is gonna be a more like precise first impressions and review video coming uh, because yes, I do know that there are a lot of reviews or let's say mixed reviews of these bags uh, of their wear and tear and um, I'm aware of all of those. I did watch them and really think about this purchase and I thought I, I wouldn't listen too much on other people's experiences. I made this purchase knowing what can happen. And I'm going to keep a close eye on especially the corners, the handles and like everything. I am aware of that. But I thought that we could talk about that in a, a separate video so that this can be a positive thing positiveness of the unboxing and introducing my new let's say work bag ish <laughs> work travel bag um and end this video of talking about experience at goyard milan because i can't really talk of any of the other stores can i so um there are not that many Goyard stores in Europe. There are not that many Goyard stores in the whole world, <laughs> for that matter. Um, and I think in Europe, there are in France, U the UK and Italy. And as it happened that we were going to Milan and Goyard have their store in Milan, it was like, okay, perfect. We'll go to the store. I'm going to get my bag and then we can just like go on with uh, with our vacation and uh, as I mean I had planned for this bag for for months before we went there and um, it I bought it as a birthday present for myself uh, although I have to say that my mom kindly um, gave in some money for this bag as well so it's not completely that I bought it but it was a birthday gift for me Let's, let's say it that way. Uh, so I was like, okay, the first thing when we get to Milan, uh, I want to go to the store. So then that's kind of like done. And then we can focus on all the other things. And if we don't go to that side of town anymore during the trip, that's fine. We have, we have made it. So 
we arrived uh, by train to Milan. Um, you will hear all of this from my blog, with my travel vlog to Italy, uh, which hopefully is gonna be good or not suck at least. Wow, that's really over advertising, <laughs> isn't it? Anyway, so we came by train. Um, it was the afternoon. And uh, once we received our hotel room and just like rested up a bit, had some food, we were like, okay, now let's head over to the Goyard store. Um, it was that point, it was like 4.30 p.m. So half uh, past four in the afternoon and the store closed at 7 p.m. So seven in the evening. Uh, we were in front of the Goyard store around 5 p.m. So the store would have been open two hours. And um, I did make my research. There is a line, like at least in Europe, there is always a line in front of Goyard because it's just, as mentioned in the beginning, it's not that easy to come by. You can't just like go online and order. So of course people are curious and probably want to purchase something. So they go to the line and, and so on. So I was expecting a line and um, <laughs> the line when we got there, it was maybe, there were maybe like eight groups of people before us. So like a group could be group of two or then if there was like one person in waiting, so that would be like one group because they let in only like one group at a time. So maybe there were like eight groups in front of us. And I was like, okay, the store is open for two hours. And there are eight groups in front of us. Like, of course we're going to get in. Like, we don't need to wait that long. Because I felt that the line wasn't that long. And um, that, I soon proved myself wrong <laughs> with that thinking. Um, because after waiting in the line for an hour or so where there actually were times when the line hadn't moved anywhere in 30 minutes uh, it came really clear to me that they have very limited capacity inside the store and they just like people who get in they just don't come out like it was such a strange feeling being like because i could see inside the store from a window it wasn't a big store and it was actually like one room, a quite tiny room. So it really was a question mark for me that what are these people doing inside? Like, are they actually asking to see everything? Maybe, uh, as if they also queued in for like two hours or so. Uh, maybe they wanted to make it like worthwhile and just like spend the two hours there. I don't know. But it was the logic clearly, like when a group came out, then they let in one group and, and so on. And as mentioned, there was a time when the 30 minute period when the line didn't even move anywhere. And as we had been standing there for over an hour, uh, I was just saying to my husband that, wow, well, what if they don't even have what I'm looking for? I just, I can't really um, stand here and then get in and then they wouldn't have it. And then he was just saying like, Really? We have waited this long, so like, I'm going in anyway. It doesn't matter if you buy anything or not, I'm going in <laughs> whenever it's our turn. So he kind of gave me some energy in that situation, even though it was like out of his vacation to, to stay in line to a store. Well, anyway, there was this kind of like guard, door guard or bouncer type of person who then sometimes also came out of the store and and when we had been waiting there for over an hour he was like okay is there someone who wants me to check inside if we have the item so then you don't need to queue if we don't have it and so on so then i asked and he said that yes they have it so i'm like hmm, okay so now i'm just like hoping that we would get in uh and then it was maybe like 20 past six in the evening when the door guard, bouncer, whatever, came out and said that they're gonna take in the last group of customers at 10 to seven. So in 30 minutes, they would take in the last group. 
And at that point, there were three groups in front of us at that point. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, 40 minutes when three groups go, go in and out in other stores, that wouldn't be like any type of an issue. But in this store, hmm. So as it happened, um, 13, oh no, 12 minutes before seven. So 6.48, we were left to go inside the store. So two minutes before the deadline where they took the last one. And we were actually the last customers that entered that store on that day. And yes, well, they had the bag. I bought it. I also tried on the one with the tan um, handles and obviously also looked around whatever the store had but I, this was only that I wanted and, and that's it so it wasn't a long visit uh, then we went to pay and I think we left the store itself at 6.59 or something so pretty much when it was closing and there were still people inside at that point and um, what can I say nearly and two hour wait in line to get to the store. I have to say there is not many, many stores I would do that. And I'm not sure if I would do it ever, ever again because that was painful. And I didn't really think that I would want a bag that much to do that. And it was just... Uh, quite unmotivating to be honest standing in a quite short line and nothing happening and that there actually is like a chance that we wouldn't get in even after waiting one and a half hours like it just it doesn't really fit into my mind uh, maybe that is the exclusivity and, and so on so I'm not sure if I would by any means recommend a store experience <laughs> with Goyard or let's say the pre-store experience. Um, inside everyone was lovely. Um, the one who helped us was very kind and then they had like a separate person taking in the payments. He was very nice. So like nothing to say about the personnel, the door bouncer, guard, I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure what the <laughs> profession was that he was doing. Um, he was super friendly and kind. Like every everyone who worked there was very nice. But the system, it kind of like sucked, uh, to be honest. And there was like nothing luxurious to stand on a line <laughs> for two hours to buy a bag. And I'm rolling my eyes to myself. So no one <laughs> needs to do that because I know... How ridiculous that is. I mean, I'm standing there with that amount of money and still, I mean, I could go to another place and buy, like, it just, mm, I don't know what it is with these things that I'm willing to do that, but I was willing to do that. Um, they asked me to jump and I was like, yes, how high? And did that for two hours. <laughs> but I mean, like, clearly there is some aggression of that process. Uh, but I love my bag, regardless of that. And I just realized that this is vid this video is gonna be way longer than I thought, because I was like unboxing a little bit of my pr um, experience purchasing and then like a lot of hyping. Uh, but now I've, I've probably been talking quite a lot. So if you are still there, thank you. And I'm sorry, uh, maybe it's been very visible that I haven't been filming. <laughs> while and I'm just like excited uh, but maybe let's kind of end on a positive note so this bag is very very lightweight which is amazing considering work trips that I carry all my stuff and if the bag itself is heavy well that's not a good start for it or anything and um, I feel I'm gonna look stylish AF if that can be said so this is what it looks like on me. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll try to insert some better footage to my next video uh, of like a re review of this. And if 
there is someone interested and I'm also planning to film a small like comparison between this one and the never for like canvas um, canvas comparison and then like the corners and everything that this tote has been like blamed of not wearing well so kind of comparing those and um, yeah it's great to be back and start with a bang thank you for watching and see you in my next video bye